I think one of the coolest things that the Apple Vision Pro can do that you can't do straight out of the box with the MetaQuest 3 is the ability to take your applications that are open and just stick them in random places around the room you're in or around your house. Personally, I don't really see too much use in different apps. I can get most of this done just in a web browser and you can open up your web browser and have it, you know, walk around with your browser and stick it to the wall, but you can't open a new tab and put it anywhere. It has to be next to the central browser or next to one of the other running applications. So I talked about this in a recent video and I got this comment from C6 Jones 720 and they said, in App Lab or SideQuest, there's a browser that lets you do this. Now they couldn't remember the name of the browser, but I did some looking around and I think I have found it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get SideQuest going. This allows you to sideload applications. I don't know why this app isn't just normally in the store, but I guess it's not for some reason. We're gonna figure out how to do SideQuest and then we're gonna install this browser and I'm gonna show you how it works. Spoiler alert for a bit later. It's pretty cool. So the first thing you need to do is have a MetaQuest 2 or MetaQuest 3 headset. Assuming you're watching this video because you already have one, we're gonna skip to the next step. Link in the description down below. This is a thing called SideQuest and it is a pretty useful little application. It's gonna open the door to what we are about to do. So scroll down and install the easy installer for the platform that you are using. Of course, I'm running Windows and so that's the one that I would download, but if you're on another platform, you have other options there to work with. Once that is done, you should have this application right here. Go ahead and open it up, and it's gonna walk you through this, but I am gonna add a little bit more context as we go. So the first thing you have to do is create an organization. You're basically going to tell Meta that you are indeed a developer. So click on that link right there, that should open up in your web browser as mine is loading. And it's really, really straightforward. Man, there's a lot of stuff here on the screen. As you can see here, you're just gonna type in an organization name, click understand, and then click on submit. Once that's done, you're gonna eventually find yourself at this screen. And that means that you are done with that part and you can move on to the next step. If we click on the next arrow, we have to enable developer mode. And this is actually really, really simple as well. Just make sure your headset is on and connected to Wi-Fi. And all you've got to do is click on the little three lines in the bottom right, click on the devices, and then the device you're working with, and then you should see developer options there. Toggle that on. So at this point, you're supposed to plug your Quest headset in, and it got a little bit weird for me here. I assumed I would plug it in and put the thing on to select the next option, because what's meant to happen is a big screen pops up and asks you if you want to authorize the data transfer. It's basically the same thing if you're used to using uh, developer options on an Android device and you plug it in, you're gonna use ADB. It's the same basic window that pops up on your Android device. But what's weird is when you put the thing on and it detects that it's on your face, you just get like pass through. The, the window you select is gone. You need to actually take it off and just kind of hold it in front of you, grab your controller, or hit the trigger to activate the controller, and then select it that way. That's what worked for me. Maybe it'll be different for you. It was kind of weird. At that point though, you should be looking at a screen that looks kind of like this. Yours will just say install SideQuest. Of course, mine says reinstall because it's already installed, but you can click on install. It'll take just a moment and you should be at that point pretty much good to go. Now there are some other headset settings in here that you can play around with. I'd recommend don't mess around with too much of this stuff unless you know what you're doing and you know the risks, but there is a lot of potential options that you can change here. So one thing I am going to do is I'm gonna change the quality of captured videos to 10 Mbps. Let's just make the captured videos look a little bit nicer than they otherwise would because I'm gonna be capturing stuff to show you guys. But otherwise, yeah, you can unplug your device and you're pretty much done. So now back on your headset, you can bring up your little app drawer and let's go to not installed, but unknown sources. Whenever you click on this to launch it the first time, it's actually going to tell you a URL to go to. You're going to pull that up maybe on your computer, which is what's in front of me here. And there's gonna be a code you're gonna type in to authorize it once that's done you should be here on this screen. If you click on the little search window up here, we're just gonna search for 
browser. That'll be the quickest way to get there. And we're looking for reality browser. Now this is where things get a little bit weird. In order to install this, you're gonna wanna grab this window and stick it over here to the side. I don't know exactly why that's what you have to do, but it is. Click on Oculus Quest 2. It's going to then jump over, do some weird stuff, and now you are looking at this application. Get rid of that. Inside the store, it is $4.99. Sorry, you have to spend a little bit of money, not too bad. You can then go ahead and buy this and launch it. All right, so at that point, we can just launch this application. So let's go back to all, or actually we should just go to install, and Reality Browser should be there. Let's fire it up, and unlike the built-in browser, it's going to fire it up inside its own thing like this, right? Which does make it a little bit annoying. Slightly more annoying than that is the fact that it has lost track of where I had everything. So I'm gonna have to put everything back. So using our little grip here, we can grab this window and I had this over here. So we'll put that back. I had this over here. I had this one over here placed sort of where my TV already is. And I had this one placed up here above my monitor. And you can kind of get the idea here. I wish that it just remembered where everything was. I'm gonna give myself a like on that video. You get the general idea though here, guys. Like, we have windows just wherever we want them to be. And if we wanna launch another window, we can launch it and then we can grab it, we can make it bigger, we can make it smaller, and we can put it wherever we want to put it. Of course, since this launches and runs like a normal app, if I leave my boundary, which you maybe can see the lines to here, if I leave my boundary, it's going to sort of mess this up, right? So it's not quite the same as the normal built-in browser where I can leave the room. I do have to stay inside this boundary. But more than anything, I want you to understand what the potential for this is. I am confident that this functionality will eventually come to the stock built-in web browser, and that, could be a massive, massive improvement. Imagine being able to just be right there in your home screen where you can have your actual apps pulled up, your camera app, the store, your horizon feed, all these different things. Also your web browser windows, and you could grab any of these things and place them in the world around you. I think Meta is going to see what Apple is doing with this, and I think that they're going to copy it, and I think that what this does, what this video should be sort of impressing upon you, is that this is 100% possible on the MetaQuest 3. This is not something you gotta spend $4,000 to have hardware capable of doing. This $500 headset, and actually the $250 Quest 2, can absolutely do this. Granted, the Quest 2's pass-through is far, far, far worse than what you've just seen from the Quest 3. Either way, it is absolutely possible. So keep your eye out for that feature because like I said, that's my prediction. It's going to be coming sooner than later. Meta is going to want to keep up with Apple and they're going to want to show that they can do these things too. And obviously they can. So guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.